So I've found myself back on Battlefront 2 once again, and I keep finding myself asking, why do I keep coming back to Star Wars Battlefront 2, even when nothing new has been added in over four years? If you've played the game recently, you've probably found yourself wondering the same thing. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to understand and explain why we have such an obsession with this game, and it keeps bringing us back in. Starting off with the game's life cycle, there is a lot to be said about Battlefront 2, both good and bad. I still remember when EA announced Battlefront 2, I was personally living in New York, sitting working a late afternoon reception shift at my college's gym, when I saw the announcement trailer and almost jumped out of my chair. In my college days, many late nights were spent playing EA's original Battlefront from 2015, and while that game had a distinct lack of content and some pretty janky and luck based game mechanics, it still had a soft spot in my heart, even if missing the token pop-up for a hero made me feel what I imagine Anakin felt on Mustafar. But nonetheless, Battlefront 2's launch trailer gave me chills like no other game trailer had before. With a full single player campaign that 2015 was constantly berated for not having, this new villain character named Aiden, a whole new adventure story to play through, and that's just for the campaign. It had me so excited. Now imagine my excitement on top of that as Darth Maul and Yoda blessed my screen for a multiplayer duel before being teased a few new maps and what was a really awesome example of how powerful Kylo Ren would be in the game and some of the things that we could actually do with him. Something was different. Something felt really special and I don't know if it was the fact that we were going to be playing all three eras of Star Wars, the hero roster, this new story, or all of the above. But I knew in my mind that Battlefront 2 would give us a Star Wars experience that no game had given us before. And then it launched. Battlefront 2 launched in quite possibly one of the most controversial ways in all of gaming. Some might even argue that it was Battlefront 2's loot box system that led to certain places around the world changing their gambling laws. Now, regardless of the loot box situation, placing upgraded hero abilities behind random loot crates, the gameplay itself was incredible. More specifically, the multiplayer had me absolutely addicted. Running around and spinning through Naboo with Darth Maul, seeing how many enemies I could catch in Vader's force choke or lightsaber throw, and of course, how could we forget about Palpatine shooting his lightning through the walls on the last phase of Naboo. Battlefront 2 scratched an itch for me that I didn't even know I had until I played it, and luckily on top of that, the developers at DICE were working tirelessly to correct the loot box problems that the game had launched with. I was actually one of the few people lucky enough to be flown out to test the new progression system before it all launched, along with getting to test Hero Showdown, Hero Starfighters, and some other things I probably can't talk about, but... Following the trip, I returned home bright-eyed and bushy, and so excited to share with everyone the changes to Battlefront 2. This is what DICE had come up with something incredible, and fixed everything we disliked upon launch. But by then, it was too late. After the large news articles had reported on what a scam Battlefront 2 was at launch, the game pretty much hemorrhaged players for a couple of months, a lot of which never came back. But the joke is on them they missed out on something absolutely incredible. Although it took some time, DICE worked their favour back with the remaining community, giving update after update, improving bit by bit, and getting some great community leadership from the CM team. And then finally, they showed us their true plans. The balance of the force has been shaken. The Clone Wars have begun. The Clone Wars updates were announced and the entire Battlefront community simultaneously crapped their pants, blew a load and had their heads pop off as we saw Anakin, Obi-Wan, Grievous and Dooku for the first time in game, along with Geonosis and a series of other additions like Clone Commandos, Droidica and more. Following these updates, it became clear that Battlefront 2 had done the impossible and dragged themselves out of the Sarlacc pit that the loot box fiasco had put them in, and next came something that nobody expected. DICE announced a Scarif update to be coming to the game after the Clone Wars, and while wondering if Krennic or Jin Erso would be added, 
due to the fact they were DLC characters in the previous game, you can imagine everyone's shock when reading this, that after two plus years of free content, the vision for Star Wars Battlefront 2 is complete. Are you kidding me? Just as we get momentum back, just as every mistake had been corrected, with the largest player base the game had seen since launch day, and it's just over like that. The community in disbelief turned to their favorite content creators for confirmation, and unfortunately, we'd all been informed the exact same thing just prior to the release of the Scarif update. So with the game having not received anything new at all in over four years now, why are there still thousands of players logging in every day and playing? I think it comes down to a few things. Firstly, at its core, Battlefront 2 is an incredible multiplayer experience and also an incredible Star Wars experience. Second, I think it's the sense of community behind this game. The people who went through the highs and the lows of this game can't let it go and still hop on every now and then to relive what is and was one of the coolest communities in gaming to be a part of. Other than a few bad eggs, for the most part, the Battlefront community from Reddit to Twitter to the game and everything in between, everyone was just insanely passionate about Star Wars and in furthermore, insanely passionate about Battlefront. And they just wanted to feel like they were a part of something bigger than just a video game, which we were. But as the years go by and players trickle off into new games, there's a few more reasons why I find myself in Battlefront 2. To start us off here, and I know I'm not alone on this, we all thought that the Battlefront Classic Collection was going to be the community's saviour, and while I thought it would be too, it launched in one of the most unplayable states you could ever imagine. Now I know the Battlefront 2 launch for 2017 was bad, but at least the game ran, at least you could play games. Now with the Battlefront Classic Collection, yes, the 501st Diaries are awesome, but they'd cut half of them out or half of them were missing due to some bug, and the multiplayer is really the part that everyone was wanting to take part in, and much to our disappointment, the servers were so broken, the game couldn't even run multiplayer matches, let alone finding a server with a free space, as everyone tried to recapture their youth or get some sort of feeling of community once again that we'd been robbed of with Battlefront 2. Now, the absolute and utter failure of the Battlefront Classic Collection has led to, once again, a yearning for a Star Wars multiplayer game that we can play and enjoy together as a community. And where does that lead us? Right back to DICE's Battlefront 2. Even as of the time recording this video, the Battlefront Classic Collection had 24 current players, with a 24-hour peak of 54 players, which is utterly horrendous three months after launch. You want to talk about a dead game? That pretty much sums it up for you. So that all leads us here, waiting for something new to be announced, and in the meantime, where do we go? Right back to Old Faithful, Battlefront 2. Now while the game has been practically the same for four years now, thankfully to the power of modding, PC players can enjoy a new experience with modders constantly bringing us cool updates like Ahsoka Tano as a playable character, The Mandalorian, improvements and additions to instant action, better spawn screens, skins that we should have had in the game previously, and so much more. Through modding we really can see the potential this game had to be something great, all to be wasted thanks to EA wanting to push on Battlefield 5, which inevitably flopped anyway. So now we are here, back to waiting for some shimmer of hope, some rumour or announcement a new multiplayer Star Wars game is on the horizon. But for now, these single player story games that we're getting drip fed is going to give us that brief fix of fun Star Wars gaming until hopefully one day we can see Battlefront return to all its glory in what I would hope would be a Battlefront 3 by DICE. Now I know that's controversial and some people do not want DICE to have the Battlefront rights anymore, but for me, if we were to get the original team back together that worked on Battlefront 2 and made the Clone Wars updates and all of the things they did to save Battlefront 2 and put them working on Battlefront 3 with maybe some more reinforcements, now that's a game that I could really get behind. That's a game that I think would launch well, play well, update well and be a game for the ages. Now I need you guys to let me know down in the comments, do you agree or disagree? Would you like to see DICE back at the helm for a Battlefront 3 
or would you prefer to see another studio go for it? And if you do, which studio would that be? Who would you give the reins of such a historic franchise to in an attempt to actually make it better than it was before? Guys, I am the Twisted Jedi. I appreciate you all watching today. If you are brand new, make sure you subscribe for more Star Wars gaming content in the future. And as always, may the Force be with you.